I'm going to speak about the uh, less uh, periplasty in pediatrics and giving uh, some uh, maybe tips and tricks about this. Although I'm not uh, a pediatric uh, surgeon, but actually at the beginning of uh, doing uh, less uh, surgery, we uh, just wanted to verify the feasibility and limitation of doing less in pediatrics. So uh, before starting, actually, this is just to, re to remember um, a very close friend who just died uh, two days ago from Corona. He was a, a very kind person. He is a, a pediatric urologist, and he was the chairman of the uh, pediatric uh, urology section of the Egyptian Urological Association. That was Professor uh, Salim Khalil. May Allah keep him in, in, in paradise. So if we would like to speak about the pediatric uh, bilbiotic junction obstruction, it is, of course, as you know, it is the most common cause of pediatric head nephrosis. It carries the risk of recurrent infections, stone formation, hypertension, and hematuria. And if it's been neglected, it may result in deterioration of the renal function and loss of the kidney function at all. And still consider the open bioplasty the gold standard for treating of urethral junction obstruction. And if we would like to have a minimally invasive intervention, we uh, definitely we uh, will go through uh, this or laparoscopy. And if we would like to have a more smaller incision, we, uh, we will go through um, less and to optimize suturing because with the open surgery, you can have a loop. Although with laparoscopy, of course, we had magnification up to 10 times, but uh, with the uh, open surgery, uh, still you can have more fine sutures. If you need to have rapid recovery, you go through the uh, laparoscopy or less. And because open surgery, until until recently, it was associated with a shorter operative time, so it was associated with the uh, less anesthesia time. But recently, now the uh, laparoscopy and maybe less had the same time like the open uh, surgery. There are some factors that may affect the uh, less, and uh, um, in fact, um, I'm just trying. Yes. Um, this is considered the uh, natural uh, advancement in the minimal invasive surgery that carries more advantage of the conventional laparoscopic uh, pyeloplasty. And as you know, the, uh, since the first report of LIS in, in neurology in 2008, there is an increasing report about the using of LIS in neurology, and every indication has been reported with LIS in neurology so far. And the first LIS pyeloplasty was done by Desai and his group in 2008. And in um, uh, a large multi-institutional study that we have done, it has proven that this didn't add any more complication or even risk for conversion in case of doing this. So to speak about the technique of this uh, uh, um, pediatric paleoplasty, um, definitely this has, unless you have to have a new setup, a new armamentarium. So regarding the ports, these are the most common ports that can be used. You can use the triport. This is the most commonly used, especially in this uh, in pediatrics and in, in this uh, 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 reconstructive surgery. You can use still the shield point system, or you can use the covidian port. This is example of this of these three ports, and definitely you need special instruments. It's better to use articulating or curved instruments. And um, ideally, it is to work with one straight and one articulating instrument, as you will see in the video in, uh, for uh, uh, just a few minutes. And some reports about using all straight uh, instruments, however, that was so difficult to try. I tried this at the beginning. And uh, ideally, especially with the uh, baloplasty, you can use your instruments, which is five millimeters, however, dimension trokers, still you can use uh, 10 millimeter uh, instruments if you would like to do this. Ideally, it's better to have articulating five millimeter camera like the endo eye uh, 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 Olympus, this ideal uh, one that you use, or instead you can have uh, the three uh, degree rigid telescope with any kind of attached camera, but this has a lot of technical limitations. To speak about the efficacy of uh, this uh, um, bilby or junction obstruction, 
we, uh, I have done uh, um, uh, a midline search about the uh, available data of, uh, of this topic. And we looked for everything. And by the end, we got like 274 uh, uh, reports. Only nine of them uh, met our inclusion criteria. And I'm going to try to, to present it simply the data that we have in the literature. As you see here, we have uh, different reports. Unfortunately, most of them, they have a small number of patients we published from our center that was in 2015. Uh, definitely, we have more number of patients nowadays. And um, overall, the, um, the age of the patient varied from two years up to 14 years. The operative time was uh, quite reasonable. It's comparable with the conventional laparoscopic veloplasty. There was almost no blood loss and the hospital stay was uh, short. And this is the rest. Uh, interesting thing that there was a study from China that included 704 patients who had 750 uh, uh, less bioplasty. This is a multi-institutional study from six centers. And in a group of patients, they did simultaneous bilateral uh, 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 less bioplasty. And this is one of the advantage of doing uh, less bioplasty. You can operate on the both sides in the same time. So um, this is, um, if we, we are going to, take, to talk about the technique, all the reports in the literature, they use the trans umbilical insertion of the port. And the most commonly used port is either the tri port or the sales port of uh, the covidian. And the majority used the dismembered paleoplastic technique. In our uh, uh, small series at this time, we used both BY plasty and dismembered paleoplasty, and all of them, like the conventional laparoscopic and open surgery, uh, stent was inserted. This is a very short video about showing the uh, less uh, paleoplasty in, in uh, eight years old uh, male child. Initially, we put the patient in the modified lateral position and we make like one and a half uh, or two centimeters skin incision through the midline of the umbilicus and through which we can have an access into the peritoneal cavity. Then we inserted in such patient uh, the covidian port and we used uh, both articulating and straight instruments and we used the five millimeter um, uh, endo eye camera. Like the traditional laparoscopic surgery, we started with cocarization of the colon and medial reflection of the colon to support the kidney and the pelvis. And we extended our dissection from the uh, left iliac fossa upwards until the splenic flexure. Then the colon was mobilized medially. And uh, 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 after that, we um, could identify the ureter, as you see here. One important trick is to use is the suction. The suction has a gentle blunt tip you can use it um, in, in doing gentle uh, dissection, especially in, 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 the, in the children. And um, it's better to have wide exposure. And also it's better to have, uh, to leave a good amount of tissue around the pelvis and the, the, the ureter to preserve the blood supply of the, uh, 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 of the ureter. Then here uh, we identified that there was a crossing vessel crossing over the ureter pelvic junction then we, this crossing vessel was mobilized. As you see here, it's very important to mobilize it. Uh, we do this very gently by uh, combining blunt and sharp dissection. After that, we ensured complete dissection of the, uh, um, uh, the renal pelvis before uh, uh, starting incising the pelvis. Uh, through the anterior abdominal wall of the child and you pass it through the um, the uh, the pelvis and by this it can save uh, uh, one hand for retraction especially if you don't like to add an extra port then we incise the um, the the pelvis and uh, another one tricky thing that we do is to do speculation of the ureter while it is partially still attached to the uh, uh, the pelvis this is very important. It helps in the stabilization of the, um, the uh, stabilization of the uh, ureteropelvic junction, and um, also it it it, it avoids um, uh, uh, spiral rotation of the uh, ureter. And this is one of the advantage of using articulating an instruments. It allows um, uh, an easy uh, speculation, especially for this small narrow ureter. 
And after this, we do uh, complete dismembering and we excise part of the, um, uh, of the pelvis. Uh, and we should do this, especially if we have a huge pelvis to uh, give a better chance of the uh, reduction of diadenal force. Then we uh, transpose the ureter and to have a wide anastomosis between the ureter and the pelvis, then we extended the um, incision into the uh, pelvis a little bit. Then we started the hand-free intracorporeal suturing without adding any extra port. And uh, for this, we used the 4-0 vicular suture. Subsequently, we started using the 5-0 vicular suture for having um, uh, uh, a smaller uh, size needle and uh, more uh, fine uh, sutures. And especially, and exactly like we, we as we do with the uh, conventional laparoscopic pyeloplasty and with the uh, open surgery, we do a meticulous anastomosis between the posterior aspect of the urethropelvic uh, anastomosis. And we prefer to do this in uh, a continuous matter. And um, uh, almost, I'm just running the, uh, to save time running the video. And um, it's, it's important uh, to, to uh, uh, do a stretch of the uh, ureter while uh, uh, anastomosing it to the pelvis to have um, a watertight anastomosis of the uh, uh, ureteropelvic junction. And um, this is another important and the tricky thing. You can use the, that was absolute, it's absorbable. You can use it because as you know that it's, it's um, technically challenging for the uh, intracorporeal knot tying in such technique. And our routine is to insert the double G anti-gradely and uh, we put it in the um, pelvis. Then the stay suture, we pass it from behind to have a better exposure of the anterior aspect of the, uh, our anastomosis. And then we continue our anastomosis of uh, this aspect like the previous one. And um, this is uh, almost the uh, final uh, 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 suture. And after this, we uh, apply another clip and we remove our stay suture. And here, this is the final view. This is a funnel shaped urethropelvic uh, junction and it's a crossing in front of the uh, crossing uh, uh, visit. So we, of course, definitely there is a learning curve for um, less and we have published an interesting article about this in the Arab Journal of Urology two years ago. And uh, we look for our series at this time of 179 patients. The conclusion was, was that at least we need 30 patients to have optimum results regardless of your initial experience with the conventional laparoscopy, at least you need 30 uh, less cases to optimize uh, uh, the, your results. The factors that may affect the operative time, of course, is as expected. The more surgical experience reduced the uh, operative time. The narrow intrarenal pelvis increased the operative time. Dissection is much easier in the children because of the less fat. Also, they, there is a thinner abdominal wall uh, that was associated with the uh, faster axis and ag exit. And adhesion uh, definitely associated with the uh, prolonged operative time. And uh, whether to fix the uh, double G anti-gradely or retrogradely is a matter of debate, as you know, even with the conventional uh, uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery. Also, the same factors may affect the blood loss, like the less fat content or the abdomen in pediatrics, the small size of the incision, the presence of adhesion is associated as expected with more blood loss. And uh, the factors that may also affect the uh, shorter speed hospital stay in different reports that I presented is the smaller incision, the less postoperative pain, early food, uh, 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 oral food intake, early recovery. However, the uh, uh, longer operative time is associated with the uh, delayed recovery and longer hospital stay. Uh, if we look to the complication of the uh, less, um, in case of uh, uh, less paleoplasty in pediatrics, almost different reports, they don't have any intraoperative or postoperative complications. Even those who reported complication, it was minor complication and that was managed conservatively. In this larger series, there was no intraoperative complication. The majority of the complication that they had, it's 8%, it was minor. And only 2% uh, uh, of the cases had major complications. So if we look to the functional results, uh, uh, almost the success rate varied from 9 to 5 up to 100% on most of this uh, uh, series. This is uh, an example of one of, this pa of our patient. Uh, this is the patient that I showed in the video. That patient had left advanced nephrosis 
the kidney had delayed function. The, we cannot see the right kidney because that was a delayed phase. And this was uh, his follow-up after uh, six months showing the marked reduction of the left hand process and the beta and junction uh, uh, um, uh, 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 anastomosis. So uh, this is, um, uh, this is, if we look for the conversion, there was no conversion, only one case that was conversion to open surgery. And in two series, there was a conversion to, uh, 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 you know, it's, I, I would say it's um, uh, reduced board laparoscopy in two cases uh, among of this uh, uh, different uh, series. The, if we compare less uh, paleoplasty in pediatrics with the uh, multi board laparoscopy, uh, less paleoplasty has single incision. It has a hidden incision better, uh, with better cosmetic outcome and less psychological and social uh, effects. And it has less pain and less analgesic requirement and definitely has better satisfaction for the patient and their uh, parents. Also, it has shorter hospital stay with early recovery and it doesn't add any uh, more complication to the patient. And in young children, bilateral simultaneous paleoplasty uh, is feasible through the same uh, incision. Also, uh, it didn't add uh, more time for the uh, uh, surgical time, I mean, and there was no uh, uh, significant difference in the blood loss compared with the multiple port laparoscopy. This is an example of the same patient. This is the same patient I showed uh, in the video. This is the immediate post operative picture and the, this is his follow-up picture after six months showing almost non-visible umbilical scars. But actually, I would like to highlight some difficulties of less paleoplasty in pediatrics. There are inherent technical difficulties of LIS in general, and so far we don't have any instruments for LIS in pediatrics. So to do LIS in pediatrics, we have to use what is available now for the adults. And also uh, doing uh, such um, intracorporeal uh, torturing technique is uh, technically challenging and it needs more training because of lack of triangulation and uh, difficult ergonomics. And so far we don't have a lot of prospective randomized comparative studies comparing between LIS and conventional laparoscopic paleoplasty in pediatrics. And still, we need development of the instruments. So how to optimize our results is to have more training. Uh, LIS should be done by uh, experts in LIS after gaining um, good experience, especially uh, we should start in adults, then we move to pediatrics. And it's better to be done in high volume center. And there should be better patient selection. I mean, to avoid patient with a small intrarenal pelvis. And uh, it's better to have a special robot for uh, a robotic less surgery in pediatrics. I think the new robot that now was developed by Jihad Kayouk, uh, it's been dedicated for adults so far. We don't have any experience about this new robot in pediatrics. And the thick, uh, uh, home message to make uh, things easier is to make uh, a cameraman while you are working behind your, uh, the surgeon. And to have this, the camera should have uh, a coaxial cable and that can be done only with the uh, end eye um, camera of Olympus. Uh, it's better to use long and short instruments in both hands. And it's better uh, to use uh, articulating and curved instruments. And you can have crossover of the hands and the instruments both inside and outside the abdomen of the patient. And it's better to use a trans-abdominal stitch uh, uh, H that uh, uh, can hold the redundant tissue as I showed in the video. And uh, it's better to use the long suction that helps in dissection as I also showed in the video. And at any time, you shouldn't hesitate to add an extra port because the safety and the success of our procedure is our main goal. So you shouldn't hesitate to add extra port at any time or even to compare to conventional laparoscopy. So uh, finally, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity again to present with you today. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for the wonderful presentation. Now we will, Prem, sir, are you able to listen to me? Yes. Are you unmute, you unmute, Prem, sir? Yes, I am, yes, you hear me, I think. Uh, uh, sir, Professor Ali, thank you very much, sir. You are very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Ganpule, sir, you want to ask any question to sir? Uh, Professor Ali, there is just one question from my side uh, regarding the uh, preference for the ports. I saw that you are using the Covidian ports. 
so uh, do you have any experience of using any other homemade ports or ports from any other company point number 1 and the second answer if you can quickly answer how how do you select your patient which will have a less approach and who will have a standard approach um actually we we started when we started when, when we started the our uh, um, uh, uh less uh, experience we started with the uh, triport uh, of limbus but by this subsequently we had some problem and the, uh, the the company had some problem in egypt so the port was not available uh, so far by this time so that's why i had to move to the uh, covidian port so we have experience with the covidian port and the triport regarding the selection of the patient as i mentioned it's better for my experience to to do less in little bit older children and um, uh, it's better to to avoid having uh, recurrent cases and a patient with the small intrarenal pelvis because those cases will be more difficult thank you thank you so much professor ali you are you are so much to exactly to the point and you have hit the bull's eye wonderful presentation thank you very thank much you. Thank, thank you thank you sir for nice presentation uh, professor ali sir thank you uh,